Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is that? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook. Got you shook. Not Dead Yet. Season premiere tonight, 8 30, 7 30 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. The podcast episode that I look forward to most every week is the Friday episode. I'll do better tomorrow. Kylie and I share what's working and what's not working in our family so that we can be more intentional as parents. And we hope that in so doing, in sharing our lives, that we'll offer some inspo that can help your family to function better as well. We are the parents of six daughters. Our oldest has just given us a grandbaby. We made the announcement on Monday, but we've been holding out, haven't we, Kylie? There's been some other stuff going on in our home that we haven't quite shared yet. Big news. Yeah, yeah, big news. I did I this did allude is, to this, this on Monday. This has been 10 years in the making. Let's, mm. let's make this really clear. Maybe more. But after some major deliberation, primarily on my part, Mm -hmm. we have decided Uh to Uh pull the kids out of school. Right. (laughs) And hopefully uh, people's collective jaws have been put back onto their faces. (laughs) Maybe this isn't as jaw-dropping as we think it is, but we kind of think this is a big deal. The uh, the parenting expert has pulled his two youngest kids out of school. We're gonna we're gonna try homeschooling. We have no idea if it's going to work. <laughs> it could be the worst decision we've ever made. But uh, there there's been a lot of conversation over a, over an extended period of time around this, and finally we've decided we'll never know if we don't give it a go. I think that isolation during COVID and the pandemic was a really beautiful eye opener mm. for us as a family specifically and seeing the engagement in learning that took place especially with Emily she was the youngest so the other girls were on their computers doing distance education um, style learning but Emily I chose not to give her that option so the school just sent home all of the work and then I would extend her from that and she just loved it yeah she's a ridiculously intelligent kid she has a love of learning but she also struggles with emotional regulation and with attention (laughs) span in the classroom because there's so much distraction. And so as we've kind of had these discussions on and off now for a number of years, but specifically as Emily has started the school journey, we're just recognising that in some ways it's actually unfair to expect the school system and a teacher who has a classroom of individual needs to be able to cater specifically to our child's needs. And if they're not able to meet them, then who will? So I want to I want, I want to tread very, very gently here because we have enormous respect for people who are working in the school system. Not necessarily an enormous amount of respect for the school system itself. There are some fatal flaws in education and most educators are aware of them and wish that the, the powers that be would make the decisions that are necessary to cover up those flaws and to, to improve things. And education is improving over time. But When we think about the stuff that I've written about in The Parenting Revolution, those three basic psychological needs that all of our kids have, a need for relationship and relatedness, a a sense of belonging and mattering, a sense of competence and capability, a sense that they're mastering their environments, and a sense of control or agency, choice, volition. Some schools do these things better than others. Some schools provide an environment that is more supportive of these needs than others. But overwhelmingly, unfortunately for our kids, we've found that their relatedness needs, their sense of belonging, it hasn't been supported brilliantly, uh, partly because of our kids, partly because of school environments and what they are. And the same with their sense of competence and their sense of choice or volition or, or, or autonomy. And so we've decided that um, we feel like we can support those needs better at home and we're going we, to... I'm, I'm, we. <laughs> you looked at me funny when I said we can support those <laughs> needs better at home. We're going to give it a crack. That's all, all I'm saying. And, and I'm going to be around. Gee whiz. I mean, I, I work a lot and I travel a lot, but I'll be here. So um, that's our first big bit of news. I think it stems... I mean, we've, we've made no secret of the fact that because we've moved a couple of times, first from Wollongong to Brisbane... And then the kids just could not settle into schools. We had four schools in five years there. And I think there were some mistakes made. 
from an educational point of view at that point. I think we made a couple of mistakes as we moved the kids around that much. And then moving again to the Sunshine Coast from Brisbane after five years and four schools uh, in, in the southeast corner. Uh, I just kind of feel like it's it's been hard on the kids. And hopefully this will – hopefully. We'll keep you posted every Friday. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you know whether it's working or not. I have a feeling that we'll have a plethora – of content. <laughs> Overwhelming. I think there's going to be a new <laughs> podcast series just in this. The Coulsons do homeschooling. Will it work or will it not? We have some friends who tried it, uh, what, earlier this year or late last year? They tried it for not even 12 weeks and just said what a disaster that was. Sent the kids back to school. The kids have never been happier to be at school. The parents have never been happier to have the kids at school. So we'll just wait and see. So that's two big things that have happened in the last couple of weeks in our family. Number one, we've become grandparents. Number two, uh, we've decided that we're going to homeschool the kids. But guess what? There's There's more. There's more. (laughs) We've made no qualms about saying that we struggle to do holidays very well. You actually struggle to do holidays very well. Let's let's put it that way. Just just for context, our last holiday, you've been listening to all of our podcasts from the very beginning and you've highlighted this is a theme. Like we keep on talking about how much we mess up our holidays, how they don't feel relaxing, how we can never really switch off, how nothing ever goes quite right to make the holiday feel like a holiday. And our last example was when we were supposed to take the family to Cairns, but I got so sick that you took the family and I stayed home and flew up four days later and had like three days and then that was the end of the holiday. Well, this time it was my turn to stay home. We've got a brand new grandbaby. You've decided to stay at home with the with, with our daughter, our son-in-law and Indiana Sky. Uh, and you sent me to Coffs Harbour to have fun with the, the, the three youngest kids while, I don't know, just a, a daddy-daughter kind of holiday for a week. So this is a group holiday. We've just kind of started a tradition of this. So you you went along with a whole heap of other friends. Yes. The kids had people to play with and you got to surf. Do a big surfing holiday. That's pretty much what it is. There's like 80 people who all show up, all, all friends. We all show up uh, and we're supposed to go surfing and everyone plays on the beach and just has a really quiet, relaxing week. And can I tell you, except for the fact that you weren't there, which ruined the holiday. Ruined. We were doing such a good job of just hanging out on the beach, enjoying a nice, slow-paced holiday. I felt like... I was getting holidays right. Until. Until. I got a phone call from you Saturday morning to say, I'm just going to go for one last surf. We're going to get in the car. We'll drive the six and a half hours home. And about probably an hour after that phone call, I got a phone call from our daughter, Annie, except she wasn't on the phone. It was one of my good friends, Susie, who said, Kylie, it's Susie. I just needed to call you. Your husband has been in an accident and he is currently lying flat on the sand. He was unable to get himself out of the water after he fell off the surfboard and hit a sandbank head first. Um, The paramedics been called and we just wanted to keep you updated. And she hung up the phone. Well, she did it politely. She didn't just <laughs> hang up on you. Just keeping you updated. Donk. It's not like she – you made it sound like we have this this n- just terrible friend who wanted to put you into some form of special torture. <laughs> just letting you know Justin's hurt himself in the surf. Well, she Bye. also made it very, very clear that you did not want me knowing. Um, and so- It's not that I didn't want you knowing. I didn't want you – worrying until we knew what we were dealing with. Mm. Well, that would have been seven hours later. Yeah, about that. When we finally found out after scans had been done that you had broke your back in two places. So over the holidays, because we holidays so well, I went surfing. And for anyone who doesn't understand, for those who do understand surfing, here's the shorthand version. I was on a backhand wave, grabbed the rail, went to tuck into a tube, and I got pitched into a um, a sandbank. For those who don't know what that means, essentially, I'm standing on a wave with my back to the wave and my front facing the beach. The wave was one of those uh, barreling lip to trough kind of heavy waves, and I went forward over the front of the board while I tried to get into the tube. Uh, it's, it's kind of advanced surfing sort of stuff. I mean, I was trying to do something very, very uh, – well, you've got to be a good surfer to be able to do it. And and what are you saying you're not? Well, in that instance, I certainly <laughs> wasn't. And, uh, yeah, so uh, landed on my head on the sandbank, traveling at speed on a wave that was probably around head height, maybe a touch bigger than that. Uh, and so my C7, for those of you who are spinally inclined, my C7 has a fracture in it, a hairline fracture. Uh, that's up in my neck area but also in my thoracic spine, my T6 uh, has got an anterior fracture 
and we've lost about 20%. We've, I've lost about 20% of my vertebral height. I feel like I've lost more than 20%. (laughs) Lost about 20% of the vertebral height in that T6. Uh, There's a fracture there and it's kind of wedged the bone. And um, I I know that I I don't sound like I've broken my back and my neck in the last couple of weeks. It hasn't shut you up. Is that what you're trying to say? Kind of, yeah. (laughs) We've had. I, I'm just. I'm going to say what I think it is. I, we've we've had a miraculous outcome, uh, in that because of the nature of these breaks, you basically couldn't break your back and your neck any better, in terms of no spinal cord damage, uh, no structural concerns, and we've had seven different medical people now tell us that within four to six weeks, I'll be back to surfing and bike riding and even well, probably not pay, playing contact sport, but. I, I get my life back fully in four to six weeks. The bones will heal. Uh, not even any need for any ongoing physiotherapy or anything like that. Like just an incredible, incredible outcome. Well, considering today's podcast is all about how you can be better tomorrow, mm. I'm really interested to hear what you've learned from this experience. So you know what I'm actually learning at the moment from this experience? There's incredible power in slowing things down. So I'm always in a rush. I've always got things to do. I'm always wanting to speed things up. But over the last couple of weeks, as my back has given me all kinds of grief and pain, I've decided that I'm not going to rush out to do push-ups or go surfing or bike riding or get my fitness back on track as fast as I can. I'm just going to let the process take its course. I kind of feel like there's maybe a macro lesson in that for everybody when it comes to the way we're raising our kids, the way we're watching our children develop, the way that we're running our families. Sometimes I think that there's value in being intentional and letting things take their natural, healthy and appropriate course. Does that work for you? I've only been telling you to slow down for <laughs> right. So uh, our I'll Do Better Tomorrow, really, the take-home message, I guess, is um, no, no, today was just show and tell. <laughs> I don't know that there's any huge take-home messages. We just wanted to share some stuff with you. Uh, No, I I think there is. Oh, really? I think there's some really important stuff here. Let's hear it. I think that in spite of the challenge that we experience in our lives, if we just continue to do the same things, we're going to get the same outcomes. And at the moment, we've continued to do the same things as we've tried to move the kids around school to school, trying to find this perfect fit. And it just hasn't been working until finally, I think for me, I got to a point where I recognized that what we're doing is not working. Our kids actually need something different and it's going to require more of me than I've ever had to give in so many ways. And yet for the first time, understanding that I'm actually the only one who knows what they need right now and what that looks like. And so I don't actually know what it looks like. I actually don't know the end from the beginning. And that's been the scariest part of this decision process for the last 10 years, which is why we've never jumped. But I'm actually open to not knowing and open to exploring it with them to see how this might change for the better. The definition of insanity is you keep on doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So we're doing something different so that we can get the different result because so far we haven't had it. We really hope that this has been an intriguing, compelling, fun, uh, curiosity-building conversation for you today and that somehow, somewhere, it helps to make your family happier. Any feedback, we welcome at podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. That's podcasts with an S, podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. Thank you so much for listening to the Happy Families podcast. We hope that it makes your family happier. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. For more information about making your family happier, please visit us at happyfamilies.com.au. Happy Families.